Hi everyone, Nathan here. I just wanted to do a quick video because so many of you have been watching my Photoshop um, videos, ones on tools and brushes and things like that. And I just thought that I would um, show you one to do with my tablet and how I set it up for Photoshop, like how I arrange my shortcuts and everything. So I've got my lava touched here. Hopefully you can hear me nice and clearly. I'm just gonna switch around um, my camera so that we're facing the tablet, I guess. So we're here with my tablet. This is of course my 13HD, my Wacom 13HD, that's my normal standard tablet that I use now, even though I do have the Huon 610, um, but I haven't used that in years because this does everything that I need. Um, I tend to work with the side-by-side -side layout and I will go into how I set everything out in a different video um, and how I arrange my workspace, but this is the basics. Um, screen hair and um, tablet hair, Cintiq hair. So when it comes to my shortcuts, which are here on the side and um, my last few tablets have had these shortcuts on the side. Um, if you remember from my video about my tablet journey, um, these are so important. They've sped up my workflow a great, great deal. So we've got Photoshop open here. Now let's just go through these one by one. Cause to be honest, I don't actually remember what these are just by looking at them. Um, it's all muscle memory now. So I, I don't look at it. I just work like that with my pen on the board and my left hand over here. And every now and then I'll switch across to here to do very specific command tasks. So I'll put that down on top. Let's see what the top one does. So top one settings, I do not use the top one that means. Okay, so I don't use my top button at all. Next one, radial menu. So I don't use that one either. That means that all the main um, shortcuts that I use are held within these seven buttons here. So let's have a look. We'll first um, use the center of the rocker ring right there. That is I. Um, I is the eyedropper. All right, and we'll go, I'll have another video which goes through what each letter on your keyboard represents in terms of the shortcuts and tools. But I is the eyedropper, which of course we know helps us to quickly pick colors, which is super useful for when you're doing blending and stuff like that. You can quickly just switch between colors and do the, take the color next to it merge that with the one that you have and it speeds up workflow so much. So my rocker ring is I. Now to above the rocker ring or um, the top of the rocker ring, just there, I've got set to undo, all right? So this used to be step back, but now that the undo is basically what step back was, it's now undo. So that's that. And you can label these wherever you want when you do actually set up your shortcuts. Um, it allows you to name them what you want, but I just keep it to pretty much what they are. And to the left, zoom out. And to the right, zoom in. So zoom out, zoom in. Okay, so undo, eyedropper, zoom out, zoom in. And at the bottom, at the bottom, we have the eraser tool. Now the reason that I have the eraser tool here and the next one, which is just below it, is set as the brush, is because on our keyboard, E is up here and B is down there. So mentally, I need to be able to acknowledge that the, the rubber should be above the brush, okay? So when I'm working, I can quickly switch between eraser, brush, eraser, brush, just like that. And then I finish it off with the bottom button just being the smudge tool, which I've assigned to K. It used to be assigned to something else, K. Um, in the default sense, it's assigned to something else, but I took that away and changed it to being the smudge tool, which of course I use a lot for blending and for especially with skin tones and stuff like that. That's how I tend to get it quite smooth. So just to go over these again, these two I do not use. What I do use is eyedropper, undo tool, zoom out, zoom in, eraser, brush, and smudge tool. Okay. And that's it. That's how I lay out my tools. Now over here on my keyboard, because of course, my left hand is free because my right hand's drawing, so I can always switch across like this, which is actually what makes this side-by-side -side layout the better layout for me, because in the past I've had it as this at the bottom and this up at the top, so I had to reach up, which I didn't find as effective. Um, with my left hand, I'm also free to do stuff like open up a new layer, just like that. As you can see, it pops up on the screen and a new layer is opened right there. Um, and anything like that 
as well. But to be honest, all I really use a keyboard for these days is new layer. Everything else I tend to just do through here and using the actual buttons here. All I need to be able to do fast is switch between my different tools because in real life, that's how I paint. Um, when I paint with oils, when I paint with watercolors, I'm constantly just able, I'm constantly just picking up um, paintbrushes, throwing them down, putting them in my mouth, things like that. And so being able to switch between the colors, the brush and the eraser is the most important thing for me. And that's what I do to speed up. So when it comes down to it, this is no hard, fast rule. You don't need to copy me. But what I tend to find is that because of how our keyboard's laid out, especially with the EMB and um, based on, you know, what tools we need for workflow, this is a very, very effective layout to have if you have this sort of uh, buttons on the left or this order of buttons. Even if there wasn't the zoom in and zoom out here, which is of course, control plus and control minus, even if there wasn't that in the shape of a rocker ring, you could have had that up here. But out of all of them, I really do think that those are the most useful because those are the most likenable to real life tools and real life actions that you would take repeatedly and often. And so that's why I put them as my shortcuts. So have a go, try, the, try it out um, if you haven't already, applying those to your shortcuts. If you saw my video going through the different um, tablets that I've used, these aren't necessarily always buttons. Sometimes they're like buttons which you press with your pen uh, and that's fine. You can assign them to things around the edge of your tablet if that's the only thing that you can do if you don't have the buttons. Either way works, but remember, it's just about speeding up your workflow, allowing yourself to work faster because, you know, uh, when you can work faster, sometimes you can <laughs> you can learn faster. It's not always the case, but it tends to be a case a lot with art and when you're practicing, okay? Uh, being able to work faster, get things done faster, um, and access things faster, speeds up your learning, speeds up your improvement. So, that's all for today. The next video that I do for Photoshop is gonna be about the shortcuts assigned to each of these tools and especially the tools that we use the most, the most useful ones. And I'm also going to show you how to create and how to change and edit um, shortcuts so that, you know, you can get them to work for you. So hopefully you found this useful. There should be videos appearing on screen right now, um, which you can click on, which will take you to more videos that are useful in terms of Photoshop and learn how to create art. And that's all for today. Thanks, don't forget to like and subscribe. And that's all for now, until next time.